Okay. Good morning and welcome everybody to BC314 uh, Media and uh, Technology and Ministry. Uh, welcome everybody. Let's take a moment to pray and then we will uh, start our class today. Um, okay, who can pray? Who would like to pray? Conan, your mic is okay? You want to pray? Or maybe Conan's mic is not okay. All right, Prince, why don't you please pray and then we will get started. Jesus, thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you this morning, Lord, for this privilege to your time for such a radio from the world. This uh, is good, but help us uh, apply the new strategy in uh, the goal in our uh, coming days, Lord. Thank you, as an entire day in His hands. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us. Yes, I know all things. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay. Welcome, everybody, once again. So we are in, uh, in, in this whole uh, course on media and technology. We are in this chapter two, where we are talking about digital engagement that means how do we engage people digitally online using media and technology the different ways so um, uh, we spent some time talking about website you know uh, just i'm just sharing with you some ideas that you can make use uh, in your ministry uh, when you create a website for your church or for you know your christian organization the website is very important. It is probably one of the primary ways by which you can engage people digitally online. And uh, so we went through some of those things, you know, to make your website, uh, uh, make it uh, searchable, make, um, you know, make it something that relates to the people that you are reaching out to and so on. So we went through that. We're going to cover a few more things today. <clears throat> And I've shared the PDF with you. Um, and uh, uh, I will share all this information with you. And you try to make use of these things because um, people uh, these days uh, are open to all of these different ways of uh, engaging with them, right? So, uh, and these are not very difficult to do. Uh, any church or ministry can uh, can. Uh, use these different ways, right? So we're going to go forward um, to some other areas or other ways by which we can engage people digitally, right? So I wanna talk about emails. Now email, you know, if, if you go back in time, let's say uh, uh, 30 years ago, before 30 years, there was no email. And uh, the only way to connect with people is we have to send post, we have to send letters, physical letters. You know, you put it in the post box, the postman goes and drops it in the homes of the people. And, and that's basically the, the way we would communicate. But then now we have email, which is very inexpensive. And it's also very fast. You can communicate with anybody across borders. I mean, anyway. So, we must think about some ways how we can use emails to communicate with people. Now, of course, uh, we must do it uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a nice way without becoming, uh, you know, uh, uh, an irritation to people. If people get too many emails, they'll get, of course, irritated. So, uh, you know, we have to use it carefully and keep some of those thoughts in mind. So you can use emails to... Uh, uh, connect with people, you can inform them about upcoming events, um, you can engage them in outreaches if you're planning some mission trips or things like that, you can inform them, you can celebrate stories, you can raise funds if there's a need, uh, you can share about what's going, you know, if somebody passes away, how do you inform people? Well, through an email, you can share information, this is where the funeral is happening or so on. And of course, you can uh, uh, pass on spiritual encouragement to people. So you can do a lot of things if you use email uh, to engage your church congregation or the people you're serving. 
but how do we you know how do we think through on this first of all uh, we need to get people's email addresses and build an email list right so uh, what you can do is on your in your website you can have uh, options to subscribe. So we have this in our APC website and also Bible College website. People can enter the email, they click subscribe. So that means they are willingly giving you their email ID uh, in order to receive what you're saying. They will receive a weekly email. Uh, or uh, uh, you, know, you can have a, another form like this where you can, you know, they can opt in. Like when they come to a website, they can click on a button and they say, I want to, get your emails, uh, I want to get your uh, sermons and all, they, they can give it. And you always give give them your sh the assurance that they can unsubscribe anytime. You know, sometimes people are afraid uh, to give their email ID because they think, oh, if I give my email ID and I don't want to receive emails, what? how do I get out? Well, you can tell them they can always unsubscribe. Um, other things that you can do to collect email IDs is, you know, what we do at least is uh, we have a first time visitor form. Um, so we have, a, we used to use a physical card and it's still there. But nowadays we just tell people to go to the church website and uh, to fill out an online form. We just collect the name, mobile number, email and uh, city. And if they want to give some comments, they can enter some comments. So Basically, we are collecting mobile number and email ID and where, where they are from. So this is our first time visitor uh, card. Um, also, uh, when you, you know, we also have another volunteer sign up form. This is online. So when people want to volunteer, we encourage people, you want to serve in church, just go up, fill up this form. This is through the website. So again, here we collect their uh, mobile number and email ID. Right? And they can say, you know, where they want to volunteer. But the um, point is, in different ways, we are collecting email ID and mobile number, because then we can use this to talk to them. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, when people enter their email ID, you know, in the any of these forms here, they enter here, or they enter here in this form, or they enter here, it goes straight to here. It goes to our, you know, our church management system, and uh, it also goes to uh, our email list manager. That means it's it's connected to our church management management system, which I will share with you later on. So the point is, you we have many ways by which we can collect emails without being a nuisance to people. You know, people shouldn't feel like, hey, why is they why are they taking away my email? You know, you know, on their own will, uh, you know, out of their own will, they can share their email ID, and you're building your email list like this, right? Uh, you know, I, I remember back in those, you know, maybe when we started the church in in the early years. Uh, you know, our email IDs were just kept in a simple uh, uh, file, in a, just a text file. I used to save the email IDs and I should manually send the emails. You know, it was about 50 people or 80 people like that. But later on, we moved to automating the whole thing, right? Uh, but it's good to be automated in these emails. So you send emails regularly. What we do is we send at least, we send one email every week which has the sermon. So those who have opted to receive that, they will receive information on the sermon. So it makes it easy. They can go and listen to the sermon again. And in that email, we would include any special events that are happening that week or in the week, coming weeks. You know, uh, The advantage of the email is you can put nice graphics, images. Uh, we keep the email short, make sure there are no errors in that. Uh, you can also provide links to the website. Um, nowadays, because many people read uh, their emails on their mobile phone, you should make sure that uh, you know the email re renders properly in their mobile phone uh, uh, as well, so they should be able to read it. Um, the subject line can be very interesting, uh, but of course, keep it factual. We, we usually limit ourselves to one church email, uh, the only exceptions would be if there's a special announcement, maybe, you know, somebody passed away, a funeral is happening or something different, you know, otherwise only one email we send. 
and we also have different you know, email lists. So, um, it, for example, if you if we want to target the men, you know, you send it to the men. You want to target uh, a women's conference, you can send it to the ladies. Like that, you should be able to uh, segment your audience, your email audience, and that you can do that with uh, email list manager. So whenever you can, you know, uh, it's nice that, that as a pastor, you send an email, you know, especially during these the times of pandemic, uh, you can send them, hey, I hope, you know, all of you are doing fine. Um, we are looking forward to getting back to in-person services, those kinds of things, just to keep people connected, encouraged. And uh, so you can decide, you know, uh, what is the best time uh, to send emails to your people. Generally, they say Tuesday, Wednesday are good days to send. And um, uh, also very important, people must give, be given the option to unsubscribe. So at the bottom of your email, always include a link where they can click and unsubscribe. Like, you know, this is an example. So that if somebody wants to stop receiving the emails, all they have to do is to click on un unsubscribe and they won't receive any more emails from us. Make it easy for them, okay? Now, uh, uh, to automate sending of emails, and I may have shared this with you in your second year as well, uh, is to use a list manager. You know, so uh, this is a free software that you can get from phplist.org, uh, and I will I will show this to you how we have set it up. You know, so when people subscribe, their email ID is added directly to the list manager. And then also uh, we create, you know, various groupings of these lists so that uh, we can target our emails. And I will, I will share this with you that lead, um, later. Uh, uh, another thing that you can do also is as an organization, you do a lot of, uh, we, do, we do a lot of communication through internal emails. Now, of course, the best thing is for us to meet face to face and talk, but there are times when emails are good, right? Um, if you can't meet face to face, you send an email. Uh, an email also documents, it records a conversation or decisions or plans. So, uh, you know, and here's just some information on how we do good emails, you know, keep uh, the content short, be courteous. Um, emphasize only what's needed and uh, be careful of how you format the message, right? So emails are good. Now this email list manager, uh, you can get somebody to set it up for you. And uh, I'll just show this uh, to us, I think. Uh, 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 I, I did share it with us even in our second year um uh, let me see here uh, I think it's yeah. so this is our email list manager I'm logging in as admin right so you can have uh, uh, subscriber lists that's how you categorize um, your list so we have various lists like for example um uh, under public i think yeah so we have a a list that's called weekly sermon that means these are people who have uh, subscribed to get our weekly sermons about thirteen thousand or something people email IDs, then we have um, by different countries if, you know, we're just slowly tracking people by countries if they choose to. These are people who on the e-learning, uh, there's India Care Project, these, this is a different group. So people who have signed in here. So suppose we want by our church location, so we can, these are, those in Bangalore list and by look central, south, north, west. So we kind of break it down like that. Um, then we could also do uh, um, um, by 
different cities in India. These are all Christian leaders in different cities. So those are Nasik, Nagaland, different, you know, uh, so we categorize this again. Suppose you want to send an email only to Christian leaders we, by cities, we can do that. Uh, and, and, and these things are growing. They're not, uh, uh, you know, and of course we have the Bible College. So uh, these are the students in the different uh, uh, years that we have. Uh, so all Bible College or e-learning and so on. So if you want to send an email only to those groups, uh, we can send uh, email IDs. Um, yeah, so uh, things like that. And these are our outreach churches. So if you want to send an email to people in that outreach church, those who have email IDs, I mean, a lot of people may not have email IDs uh, for our rural churches, but uh, those in cities will have. So this is our list manager. You can, uh, you know, we could, uh, uh, set up an email and uh, send. So, you know, this was an email that was sent on the 20th, 20th of Jan, somebody passed away. Uh, so we sent an email. It was sent only to ABC Bangalore, uh, to, a, you know, to about uh, 1,952 people. And these people have seen it and so on. So this was sent yesterday, right? So, so, like this, so you, and, and we, you know, you set up the email and you send it to the list that you want. So you can target, uh, you know, who, who should get it. So, uh, some having something like this, and I log out, having something like this is a very uh, useful thing to communicate with church people and so on. Uh, it makes it easy. Now, of course, email is one form of communication, but then um, th the another one is through messaging, right? So uh, we have a SMS short message service, and also you could send uh, multimedia messages these days. Uh, and so text messaging is also important. So once again, collecting people's mobile numbers is very useful, and you create a mobile number, uh, create a list uh, of uh, um mobile numbers of your church people. And then you can use um, any uh, messaging app to communicate. Uh, we'll just talk about SMS, uh, phone SMS and WhatsApp, okay? And of course, there are many other ways that you could connect with people. Now, messaging is very useful because uh, a lot of people today prefer uh, just seeing things on their phone uh, they're not so excited, maybe of phone calls or emails. Um, a lot of people prefer text messages. And, uh, you know, if you can, you know, um, write your message very well, and you can get the message across to people very fast. And uh, they are more likely to read the SMS or WhatsApp message than go and check their emails. And uh, it's a very uh, unobtrusive way to reach people. Um, so what are some good practices when you about SMS and uh, WhatsApp? You can uh, let people opt in. If they want to opt out, they can opt out. They can say, you know, we don't want to receive any more. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it's important to uh, use proper templates and formats for different occasions. So we have standard formats. When somebody passes away, this is what how you send a WhatsApp message or an SMS message. We have standard formats, uh, so uh, people get used to, you know, the way the message is brought to them, and try to keep it to one or two messages per week. So actually, there are many weeks we don't send any SMS or WhatsApp. We only use it when it's necessary. Now, there are service providers who can help send bulk SMSs. So suppose you have, you know. Uh, a hundred or two hundred or thousand or several thousand mobile numbers. Um, uh, you know you can't ma you can't manually send it to all of them. So you use uh, bulk so pro service providers who can send bulk SMS. These are some people in India that you can use, or you could use WhatsApp, right? So right now uh, we used to use SMS for several years, but we have kind of moved away from SMS to using WhatsApp uh, messages. So 
uh, again, so you could set up an account with these people and then you could send, you can send a broadcast message to, you know, you may have several thousand people. Uh, you can send them a WhatsApp message just right away. Okay. And they can also have conversation. They can reply and through the uh, web interface they give you, you can actually reply to their questions and so on. So it's not just one way, it's two-way communication through WhatsApp, through the uh, website they give you. So you can set up an account with them and do it. Right? Whereas SMS is usually you know, one way. You just send a broadcast, it goes to people. Uh, it's one way. Whereas here in WhatsApp, you can do two ways. Uh, so here's an example. We sent this out uh, on 15th. Uh, we launched, I mean, uh, the worship team released a Hindi song. And so we sent this out to uh, several thousand uh, mobile numbers. Uh, so it's a nice thing, you know, you could attach a nice picture, uh, a, lot of, a lot of information. You can give a link to the uh, YouTube. And you can also have a, almost like a button uh, where they, when they, when they, tap on that, it opens up um, wherever you want them to go to. And in this case, it takes them to the YouTube uh, 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 video. So we just send this. Out. So this is a nice thing to do. It's very attractive and it's a WhatsApp message that you can send. And we sent it through our account with uh, Wati, right? So this is a good thing to set up and to use. Now, uh, there's of course a lot of advantage with multimedia message. People are going to uh, like to receive WhatsApp messages like this. You know, it has a nice graphic and all of that. They won't mind receiving it. Uh, uh, but, you know, we just have to, you know, uh, uh, make sure we follow some standards uh, when we are sending images or when you're sending videos. Uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, don't send very heavy uh, or large images. Don't send huge videos. Got to be mindful of people's uh, bandwidth and so on. Uh, keep the text as minimal as possible. Be, basically they say, be as minimalistic as possible in what you do. And uh, in videos, you could probably give a link to the video that's rather than sending the video to them. And you try to keep the videos uh, you know, as short as possible when you're doing an announcement, okay? So that's about text messaging and uh, um, uh, uh, multimedia messaging. Let me just pause here, I know I'm talking a lot. So let me see, any questions, any uh, thoughts so far? Everybody's with me. Uh, you're following me. It's all okay. All right, any questions? All right. Um, I'll just share a few more things that we could do uh, to engage with people. Some of these things uh, are already familiar. Uh, the next thing I just want to bring our attention to is virtual meetings. Uh, so that's another way to engage with people. Uh, and uh, I think many of us are very familiar with these things. Uh, we are all familiar with Zoom and uh, we are all familiar with Google Meet. So we already have at least uh, two of these tools uh, that we are very comfortable using. And then there are other tools as well to have uh, video calls and so on. And this is good, you know, um, especially given the situations that we're going through. Um, video meetings are good. Webinars are also very good. People uh, are, are open to it. Uh, except that I think because there's been so much happening the last two years or so, there is some amount of, you know, tiredness in attending more video meetings and webinars. But generally, we, we still use it to keep in touch with people and and uh, interact with people. So here are just some good practices when you're doing video meetings. Uh, try to you know keep things at your eye level. Uh, if you're if you're having a private uh, meeting, then you know use a passcode. 
and uh, you have proper lighting, you use your microphone, and you can filter out background noise, okay? Uh, the last thing, or maybe the, this, the second to last, uh, I wanna just run through some content distribution platforms. Uh, I'm not spending much time on virtual uh, meetings. Uh, that's something we're all familiar with. But content distribution platforms is, if you have digital content, like you have eBooks, you have uh, MP3 audio, or you have video, you can actually distribute it worldwide through um, these distribution platforms. And, uh, and, uh, and, and these, of course, are very, very, you know, very useful. Um, uh, uh, for example, eBooks. So you can write a book, uh, put it in, you know, a, a PDF form, and then, of course, some of these are use their own format, and you can convert it from PDF to their format online for free, and um, and you can distribute your books globally, right? So we have a tremendous opportunity uh, that. You know, you, you can sit in whichever part of the world you are and you can write books or create audio, audio files or videos and it can reach anywhere in a global audience. So I don't, I'm just listing some of these uh, channels uh, so that you have, uh, your, you, know, you have some awareness and you can make use of it if you want. And we distribute all, uh, we make use of all of these channels uh, for us, uh, when we distribute our PD, our books, or our audio files, or our videos, we use a number of these channels. So it's it's actually going out globally. Uh, 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 it's available. So Amazon Kindle, uh, you can release your books there, and uh, uh, you can uh, indicate that you want to give it for free. That's what we do. So we don't uh, charge for our books. And uh, it can go reach globally. Um, of course, they do have, and all of these people have some certain specifications you have to follow uh, if you want to upload your book over there. Um, Apple iBooks, again, a good uh, good usage. May not, of course, may not be as wide as uh, Amazon Kindle. Uh, Barnes & Noble, again, we make our books available through Barnes & Noble. It has some amount of market share. Uh, Kobo. The interesting thing is that uh, through Kobo, you can reach about 190 countries, which is quite amazing. You know, uh, of course, Amazon also, Amazon Kindle also has a huge reach, uh, but through their Kobo partners, we can reach a huge number of people, and of course, Google Play. Uh, again, our books are available through Google Play as well, and you can you know, almost everywhere people access it. And then there is script through which again, you can distribute your books for free, right? So this is, these are some of the top or the main distribution channels for eBooks. So I wanna, I wanna encourage you, you know, if, if God uh, enables you to write, even if it's a simple book, a light book, a small book, you have the opportunity of distributing it on all of these channels. And, you know, who knows, somebody may pick it up and read it and be blessed, right? So you could distribute the book uh, globally through these channels. Similarly, there are channels for audio. There's MP3 files. Um, of course, uh, Google P Podcast is, uh, and uh, uh, many of these are very well known, used. Uh, Google Podcast, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, uh, Spotify, and uh, again, Spotify has a big reach, and Stitcher. So I, I would encourage you also, if you, you know, you could just, if you record your sermons, Sunday sermons, you set up accounts in these channels, and you release the same message on all these channels, you, you know, it, it gives you access to people around the world and uh, God can use it to bless many people. Lastly, uh, sorry, similarly, we have video channels, which 
many many of you are familiar with YouTube, and uh, you're you're already probably using it. Uh, it has a you know huge reach globally. Uh, what probably is less known is Vimeo, but Vimeo also is a good platform to put your videos out. And uh, we we have our videos on YouTube and Vimeo, uh, so that those who are using Vimeo will be able to access our videos. And then okay, all of all of us are familiar with putting up videos on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, these are again good channels to reach young people. And uh, Pinterest and also small videos on uh, uh, Twitter. Right? And Daily Motion is catching up, uh, getting a little bit popular. So I want to encourage you even your Sunday sermon videos, which you which I think all, many of us will be doing, to try to give it more exposure by using more platforms. You know, we do, uh, I think many of us are already using YouTube, but try to get your videos out on other channels like Vimeo and um, maybe on uh, Daily Motion as well, so that, uh, you know, it, it reaches different audience, people who have a different interest. The last one I just want to mention in passing, not go into much detail, is you know if possible you can create a church app, and uh, uh, people can. That's another way to engage with people. Okay. So uh, this brings us to the end of chapter two on digital engagement. Uh, what we have done is we've said, look, there are many different ways to engage people digitally. And some of the main ways that we talked about are websites, then uh, emails, then text messaging, whether SMS or WhatsApp. And then you have uh, uh, your the video conferencing. And then we have uh, digital distribution channels. That's when you create PDFs, MP3s, or videos. There are channels by which you can reach globally. And lastly, also, if you um, uh, have people who can help you put together a church app, uh, you can also create an app and release your content through that. Okay, so I'm going to pause here for today. And uh, next week, mm, I will share some, uh, uh, I'm just thinking whether to get into the guidelines. Um, the, the chapter that you're supposed to get into is, uh, on guidelines, like you know, just best practices on uh, creating graphics and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm thinking whether to get into that or uh, what I do want to do go into is the specifics like audio. So what are the, you know, how do you set up an audio system? We're gonna get into that uh, video, live streaming, you know, all the, the equipment that, that we use uh, for all of these things. Uh, just to be, just to help us get familiar with this, uh, you may be already using some of it, or some of it you may use in the future. Uh, but just to share with you these details uh, that you can use, and uh, some of the free open source software that's there, which you can use for live streaming and other things. And we will cover all of that in the weeks to come. Any questions on this chapter? All good? Okay. So let's um, end here for the day. Uh, I'd encourage you to think about uh, making use of uh, as many of, uh, of these uh, methods and uh, engagement strategies in your ch for your church and your ministry so you know, we can reach more people. Okay. Let's close in prayer and we will uh, dismiss. We'll meet again next week. All right. Dave, are you able to pray? Um, is your mic okay? Sure. Okay. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this class, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you have given us each uh, this opportunity. You have given us the strength to be in this class, Lord Jesus, and you have given us the wisdom uh, to invent things and um, create things. You have given us the technology and 
We will be thank you, Lord Jesus, and help each one of us to always use it for our for you, uh, for your kingdom and mm. bring glory to you, Lord Jesus, to serve uh, serving your people, to uh, building bridge between people to bring them into your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, have a good. Uh, weekend and God bless you all and see you again next week. Thanks. I know. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. God bless.